Shalom and welcome to Heart to Heart. We're so glad you've joined us and you're in for something good. Yes. Today we're going to talk about staying focused. And this is so amazing because many of you out there, you need to hear this word. And I have with me my wonderful, handsome son, <laughs> Mr. Fred Wiley. Woo! <laughs> this is our first program together. Amen. And I know you have a whole lot to offer to the Amen. people. Amen. Praise God. And this is what the Lord has laid in your heart. Amen. So why don't you begin with a scripture? Amen, Bishop. Yes. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, it reads that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive mm. Mm. can i read another translation sure please let me read uh, from amplified so then we may no longer be children tossed like ships to and fro Amen. between chance gods of teaching and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine. Amen. The prey of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers engage in every shifting form of trickery in inventing errors to mislead. Amen. My, my, my. Go ahead. You know, Bishop, it, it reminds me that, you know, just like I feel that in this day and this time that so much is happening in the world and even in the church itself. And a lot of people are getting distracted. They're getting off focus, off course. You know, and if winning the souls of men and women to the kingdom is the primary focus, we have to make sure that we as the body of Christ stay focused and consistent in totally comprehending, understanding, and teaching sound biblical doctrine and not be caught up by denominational isms and what this organization says or what, what's going on here or there, but by sound teaching. It's so crucial because this is what's going to deliver people. This is what's going to transform people is the uncompromised word of the living God. And not only the, the, the people in the church, uh, I mean rather the pastors or the ministers, but also the people in the church. Yeah. Let, me, let me read, the New American Standard says it this way. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness mm. in deceitful scheming. In, all, in other words, you can also say it this way that people having itching ear, you know, the scripture yes. talks about itching ear when they hear about, oh, this prophet is in town, they, they, they yes. run, then their, their schedule is cleared, and yes. uh, this man of God or woman of God that does yes. this miracle, and they drop everything, they are running. The, the Bible said, don't be a child. I exactly. love what, what Paul, Apostle Paul said. He said, there was a time I used to be like a child and talk like a child and acting like a child, but now I'm grown. Exactly. We, we should be grown. You know, you, you, you don't want to remain a yo-yo. You know, a yo-yo up, up and down today, up tomorrow, down. that man of God or that woman of God said this, and mm -hmm. then the next day is somebody else. Exactly. We want to stay focused on the word of God. And God can speak to whosoever mm -hmm. that would dare to seek him. You can yes. seek him and he will speak to you. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. Go ahead. You know, again, like I said, you know, in, in this day and time, I feel like people are getting totally off course. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting caught up in titles of individuals. Mm -hmm. We're getting caught up in who, which church do you go to because right. that, the name of that particular leader is popular or not so popular. Oh, my God. No, um, preaching. The, 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 the size of the church, well, I know that's a mega church, mm -hmm. so I know... You know, mm -hmm. you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. But despite the title of the individual, despite the size of the ministry, are they teaching and adhering to sound biblical doctrine? Mm -hmm. And are you getting a hold of that for you and for your family and for others that God leads you to? Amen. Amen. We can also talk about being focused, staying focused 
in other areas. Yes. Okay. Yes. In in relationship. Yes. If you get married and the Lord said to you, "This is your mate." Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, we can go there. Yes. And uh, issues of life will come. Oh yes, they do. Now you have to stay focused on God, who spoke to you when you got married. Yes. That you're having challenges in your life yes. doesn't mean that God changed His mind. This is true. Uh, and staying focused is really. Let me let me read from Hebrews <laughs> chapter twelve. And um, I want us to read verses one and two. Wherefore, yeah. seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience you cannot stay focused yes. without being patient yes let us run with patience the race <laughs> that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith yes who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. So so we, we see right here, there's always a, a great opportunity for us to stay with whatever weight that yes. the enemy will bring around and about mm. you. But we have to say, no, we're going to stay focused. The Lord called us. Yes. You know, husband and wife. Now mm. there are issues going on, but when you do verse 2, looking unto Jesus, I Yeshua, our Messiah, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, our trust in him. All things happen between you and your children, all children and parents. Then you change your mind and you start saying things that's not of God. But the Lord said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of Amen. our faith. Amen. And for the joy that was said before him, he endured. Amen. He endured the cross. If he endured the cross, you can endure whatever it is. Amen. And that is where the Amen. patience comes. Yes. So we can be able to yes. receive and possess your possession. Ooh. Amen. Stay Amen. in focus. Stay in focus in everything. Yes. Not yes, having yes. a plan B. <laughs> Ooh. What do you have to say? My, my, yeah, my. It's amazing you should mention that. I'll think about the blessed are the, <laughs> are the peacekeepers. Mm. For they shall inherit the kingdom of Ooh. God. So when we understand that one of the roles that we play as believers is to keep peace. So whether that's in our homes, in our jobs, with other members in the body of Christ, Keeping peace should be our focus. And so one of the things my, my wife and I always joke about, we say there's going to be no vacations. And what that means is there'll be no time apart. Mm. Whatever we do, we're going to do together. And if we agree to disagree, we're going to agree to disagree together. Amen. Amen. And so this way we keep the peace. We keep the, the shalom in our home at all times. And that's a focus that we have on, on a regular basis. Do you know it takes staying focused to make that happen? Yes, it does. A and we have to make a committee of one. This is true in the marriage. It's true with your siblings. Yes. It's yes. amazing. Yes. No two people are the same. <laughs> so, so we have to make a committee of one. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful when your wife is on the same page with you. Amen. But even if... Your spouse is not on the same page with you. You can also make up your mind to be a committee of one that there will be shalom in the home. Yes. I'm telling yes. you, it just takes one person yes. to stay focused. Amen. To keep that climate in the home yes. very calm. Yes. I'm married now for 37. I think I'm now, it's going to 38 years. You know? and, and same same man, I'm the only <laughs> man. Okay? We give God the praise. Amen. But it's staying focused. Yes. Issues will come, yes. but you maintain focus that yeah. whatever goes on, there's nothing about divorce in this home. You know, that's go, amazing. No, that's amazing you say that, Bishop, because um, I remember some. I remember a former pastor friend of mine was at a message one time, and he was talking about uh, couples coming together, and yet one person is thinking, like the Bible says, "Till death do us part," but yet the other person isn't really on that same page. 
there until this circumstance happened, until that happens, and I'm having an exit strategy. And what he was saying was, if you're going into a relationship with a pre-set uh, exit strategy, you are never fully in that relationship from the beginning. Yeah, some people have a plan B. Yes. Okay, now I know you really love me because you <laughs> bought me a Mercedes. Now I really know you love me because you got me a ring, a diamond ring, 4K. Now I know you truly love me. That should never be the case. If you have a qualifier to make you not to have a divorce, then you're giving room to the enemy. And that's not staying focused. Staying focused says, okay, well, I, I said, you know, um, I'm, I'm in for this. When I, when I made that commitment before God and we, we, before the people, yeah. I made a commitment until Jesus returns. And that, that settles it. Amen. It doesn't matter whether Amen. the man promised me or the wife promised me uh, heaven and earth and, <laughs> and it's not delivering. It doesn't matter. What Amen. matters is that I said this is it and I will stay focused. Question for you now that we're on that topic. Yes. How do you feel as a bishop and as a, a, a wife and a mother of 37 years about Christians having pre nuptial uh, 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 agreements Agreement. going into a marriage? You know, th that's a very good question. V very, very good. You know, when you have things that are not anywhere in the Bible written down chapter and verse, everyone has to make their own decision. Okay. You know, it's, it's really, um, let's say you have uh, a, a, a couple or a couple to be and they are 17 years old or they met in high school and I, I don't see why they would do all that. Right. But you may have, uh, again, going to what you we just said earlier, you are the only one that knows your heart. Yes. No matter how much you love your wife, yes. you don't know her heart. God knows her heart. True. And she knows her heart. Correct. You don't know, and vice versa. That's true. So you know, if, you, if you are in your 50s when you got uh, married, mm -hmm. and you have um, you know, billions of dollars of investment and all that, and she probably um, is just coming out of school, just an example. Okay. And the Lord is lay, laying in your heart, not because you don't love her, you may turn around and give everything to her after three, four, five years. But now you're saying, okay, let me just do this because it's an investment. You already got married before you have children, and you may say, I'm going to put away this for for my children that I, I had before I got married, nobody's going to judge you, and I don't think she would judge you either. So it depends. Right. That's an open-ended um, example. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. Everyone varies. True. But I believe when you are getting married in the Lord, Amen. you will make the right decision. And that's why I really want people to go get counsel. Amen. The man or the woman of God that God has placed in your life as your pastor will know you by the Spirit of God. Amen. And he will bring everything out to you on the table, and the Lord will use him or her to direct you. Amen. And it's going to be very, very wonderful marriage. I believe everyone is unique. Every couple is unique. You need to allow God to deal with you one-on-one. -on -one. So does that help? It helps. And I would say, too, I think where a lot of people are, are missing it sometimes is they're not allowing the time to know the person mm -hmm. without intimacy. That's right. Taking place. So intimacy is coming into the picture. It's clouding, Everything is it's distorted. clouding distorted. The judgment is distorted. Mm -hmm. So now wrong, unwise decisions are being made based on these feelings and not based on what's really going on between the two individuals. Stay in focus. Focus. Stay in focus on your commitment with the Lord. Yes. Okay? When you stay focused with your commitment with the Lord, you're not going to commit adultery before marriage. Amen. Okay? And then you can also submit yourself to your pastors Amen. to get counsel. And I've heard of people that have come to their pastors and they said, no, two of you, I'm not seeing both of you as a husband and wife. Yes. And they listen. Now, I have counseled people, the other pastors in the church do, but if you really submit yourself to your, to your pastors or your Amen. bishops, the Lord will use them. Amen. There are things you may not be seeing, 
and they will see it. by the Spirit of God, God will reveal things to them. Amen. And I'm telling you, God will back you up because you said, Lord, I want it to be done your way, not my way. Amen. So that also comes from a willingness of individuals to, again, you say, want to do it God's way mm -hmm. and want the best that God, the best. You know, as right. parents, we want the best for what? our children. How much more? You know, How so therefore, more? if we if our if we view our heavenly Father in the exact same context, Amen. Amen. He wants the very very best for us. Amen. That's why He gave us His Word. Amen. I don't understand believers who don't seem to understand that mm -hmm. this is the best that God has That's right. for us. That's right. So if we understand, for God so love the world, love gives. Love doesn't take. Love always gives. Amen. So therefore, if God gives us his best, he gave us Jesus, he gave us his word, he gave us his promises, then we should have a heart of, of willingness to say, okay, Father, this is the best. So let's do it the right God's way. God's way. That's staying focused. The only way. Focused Amen. on having the best for our lives. Amen. Staying focused in the ways of God. Amen. You know, when you, let's read that uh, Matthew chapter 6. That covers a lot of things. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Staying focused in the ways of God for everything you do. Not just for um, uh, marriage, for everything. Amen. Even for jobs, raising Amen. children, staying focused in Amen. the ways of God. What does Matthew 6, 60, uh, 33 say? Matthew 6.33. 6, 6.33 reads, mm -hmm. But seek mm -hmm. ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So what does that say? That says, but seek you first, first. the ways of, of God. God. Yes. The yes. way that God does things. Yes. The ways that God's people have done things and have excelled through his word. Seek after that, Amen. not the ways of the world. Yes. Okay, seek after the ways of God, the way God has stipulated through his word Amen. to do things. And then he says, and everything else will be added unto you. Yes. And, yes. and th th this is what staying in focus is. Yes. When yes. you think about even in Korea. Yes. God wants to guide his people yes. what job to take. Yes. What school to go to, what career to pursue. You know, when I hear people saying, oh, you know, uh, a lot of people in the medical field, they make a lot of money. So I, I need to go register as an RN or, <laughs> my God, have mercy. Yes. I have seen people that didn't do RN and LVN and medicine that have, God have, has blessed tremendously. Mm -hmm. No, you want to seek him and do it his way going to the Lord in prayer, yeah. in his word, and he will direct you. The Holy Spirit that lives in you will direct you. That is really what it means to stay focused. So you mean me running out and just doing things my own way and then coming to God now and asking Stop. God to, to, to clean up my mess that's right. is not a wise way to live my life? No. Okay. No. And, and that's why you see things change and change and change and change. You see people, they start a business. Tomorrow is another business. Yes. The next day is another business. And you're looking through years are passing and there's no fruitfulness. Mm. See, we want to go to God before the plan. Mm. Then he gives you the vision. He gives you the dream. He said, when we delight in him, all the desires of our hearts will be granted. But we have to delight in him. How do we do that? Go to him first. Amen. Go to him first. Amen. Not after you have made the business plan and you have secured and you have already um, uh, gotten some business partners and you have committed yourself. Then you say, okay, Lord, now let's pray. Let's, let's ask you. No, no, no. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, now stamp it. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Th this happens with people in the churches. Yes. They, 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 they now have gotten involved with this man and this woman. Now they come to the, 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 the ministers and say, okay, now this is the one. Stamp it. Okay, then after a month, they, they don't want to see eye to eye with each other. No, staying focused is staying focused in the ways of God. How does the Bible say we should do things? Seek him first. Yes. Seek him first. 
And when we seek him first, he will reveal things to us. And he says, everything else will line up. Amen. You know, I, like that I, I heard an acronym for the word focus. It's okay. following one course until it's successful. So if following one course until it's successful, how about following God's course? That's right. I believe he's the most qualified That's right. to lead us and guide us That's right. in every area of our life. That's right. So if we follow, seek ye first the That's kingdom right. of God, That's right. his course, yes. his plan. That's right. We're on the right track. And he said he is the way. I am the way, the truth, and, and the, the life. life. One way. One way. He is the way. That's, that's the course. <laughs> He's the way. Okay, so, so stay in focus. This is so important. And I have found that you never go wrong. Amen. When, when you take time and say, okay, Lord, no, what, do you, what do you want me to do today? So, so there's not multiple ways to God? No. Okay. One way. One way. One way. Okay. Not through Muhammad. Okay. Not through Buddha. Okay. It's only through Jesus. Okay. Yeshua. That's gotcha. it. That's it. That's, That's the it. way. What else is, is in your mind about staying in focus? Um, um, you've been teaching on activating your, your spiritual uh, sensory mechanisms. Yes, yes. So, again, f staying focused in that area means, again, as situations and circumstances are happening. Perfect example, we have a, a major presidential election happening here in the United oh, States. Father. And, and we have some candidates that Thank are, that are, that are, Jesus, that are yes. sharing their different viewpoints and perspectives mm. on things. Mm. And it's very challenging to know the way just listening to both candidates yeah, because they both sounds, bring out some points. That's they right. both have eloquence mm -hmm. of speech, mm -hmm. they both can appear to be mm -hmm. concerned for the people. Mm -hmm. But if we're seeking the face and the wisdom of God mm -hmm. and allowing the Holy Spirit of God mm -hmm. to touch our hearts and lead us in the direction and the way to go, and I believe that's so essential in a lot of things in our lives, but I'm just using this, this election as, as because this Example. is a really huge situation coming up that here. That is huge. That is yes. huge. So stay in fo how do we apply that stay in focus? Now, stay in focus here will be stay in focus to the big picture. Yes. What is the big picture? The word. Yes. What has all the other men and women of God, what did they do in the past in their countries, in their nations? What did Daniel do? What did Elijah do? And how did that please the Father? Now, example, Elijah saw the sin that was in the nation. Mm. He cried out to God. And it's almost like God said, okay, now uh, I have empowered you. You're there on this earth. What else do you want me to do? You do something. What did Elijah do? Elijah went to the king and said, it's not going to rain in this nation for three and a half years. This has to stop. Abominations in this country have to stop. Yes. One man. Yes. Three and a half years, it did not rain. Wow. How? A man, one man, Amen. stood up and said, I am going to be the mouthpiece of God. He was not looking for handouts. Amen. He was not looking for maybe the king is doing something for my sisters or my brothers. He was looking at the big picture. Amen. What is the big picture? His country is no longer glorifying God. Amen. The world, who made the world, who created the world? <laughs> Hebrews 11.3, the word of God yes. set this cosmos into place. Amen. Now look around us. Are we pleasing God? Is our nation pleasing God? If it's not, who is going to change it? We, the body of Christ, we Amen. are the salt of this earth. We are the light of this earth. Amen. So how do we do it? By different means by praying yes. and not being focused on what the world is saying, yes, what the TV stations are saying, yes. but what is God saying that he desires this United States of America or your nation to be? Absolutely. When I think about this, I think about some nations. I'll give you an example. In Philippines, Wow, we are out of time already. Ooh, oh, my, my, yes. my. Why don't you look at that camera and Amen. pray? Amen. Oh, this is getting so Hallelujah. Good. Stay in focus. Father, we just thank you for your word has gone forth, oh God.
Mm. I pray that it seals the hearts and the minds Thank of the you, people, Lord, oh Jesus. God, to stay Focus Amen. firmly on course, O oh God, mm. until success is in you, O oh God, Amen. by winning many, many souls in the kingdom of God. Amen. So, Father, we now we just thank you right now that you will watch over that word day and night Amen. to help it come to pass. If you said it, Father God, it will happen, Father Amen. God. And, Father God, we're going to thank you right now in advance for all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise belongs to you this day and forevermore. Thank you for tuning in to OCN. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Hey.